Good evening, everyone. We'll be starting shortly uh, while I do see some of the names here in the participants. So if you're here, uh, we'll be starting in the next five minutes and uh, we would request you to put in your name and the place that you're joining us from, which part of the globe uh, you're joining us from, which time zone you're joining us from so that we get to know the whole level of participation globally that we are having today. Hi, Mr. Tamid. Hi, Subha. Hi, Ola. We have someone from Ecuador. Um, Malaysia, Grace. Hi, Dini. Malaysia. So some of the comments pouring in. Um, audience, please uh, wait for four more minutes. We'll be starting shortly. No, Dini, it's not compulsory to turn on your video. Uh, however, we would like to request you if you can keep your mics uh, and your video off uh, for a smoother functioning of the webinar. Hi, Ricky from Venus, Jakarta. Hi, Archana. For those who have joined in, Right now, I'm requesting everyone to put in your names and the places you're joining us from in the chat so that we know the level of participation of this webinar. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, we have Lobna from Jordan. We have Elizabeth from Dubai. We have Saheli from Hyderabad. We'll be starting shortly. We'll be trying to start on time in the next two minutes. Hi, Hannah. We have Dipanvita from Hyderabad. Hi, Dipanvita. We have Pushpavati from Bangalore. We have Hana from Haleburi, Kazakhstan. Hi, Hana.
so i hope i'm visible and it's time so we can start now so i would like to start with a welcome note for everyone good morning good afternoon good evening buenos dias guten morgen bonjour depending upon the part of the globe and the time zone you're joining us from we welcome you to this webinar titled know the ib myp visual arts e portfolio i'm rahul singh and i'm the moderator for this webinar Having said that, I would like to start with a brief introduction of our General Foundation. Our General Foundation is a not-for-profit independent organization that supports the process, practice, and exploration of art across the globe. Our General Foundation believes that art and culture are essential foundations to the community and a necessity for a more equitable and just world. As facilitators, catalysts, and provocateurs of the field, our General Foundation supports critical investigations, explorations, and experiments that push boundaries of knowledge and practice and challenge dominant narratives. It's a foundation aimed at becoming a leading global platform of higher learning by developing and helping the creators of tomorrow who can shoulder the challenges of globally responsible and ethical leadership in the 21st century and by focusing research, scholarly and creative endeavors that can contribute to the creation of new knowledge at the frontiers of specialized areas, as well as at the interface of diverse disciplines. With this, I would like to introduce our speakers for this webinar. So our first speaker for the day is Ms. Nirupama who graduated with a master's in fine arts degree from the Academy of Art University in San Francisco, USA, specialization in drawing and painting. Nirupama has over 20 years of experience in teaching in international schools in Dubai. She's a passionate teacher and artist who has participated in various exhibitions within Dubai. Nirupama started with teaching the IGCSE curriculum and graduated to the IBDP program in 2007. She has recently retired from heading the visual arts department at Dubai International Academy to relocate to India. She's also an IBDP visual arts examiner. As an artist, she's best known for her expressionist self-portraiture, where she's commenting on life, her attitude, and learning through her experiences. Her work compares the beauty of life and works as a visual diary. Her style is realistic with a mixture of soft brush strokes and expressive mark making using brush as a tool. Nirupama works with various mediums with an intent for the viewer to connect with her work at a personal level. Welcome, Nirupama. Our next speaker for the day is Nirav Bhatte, an enthusiastic art practitioner with an aim to align the vision of teaching art with the IB vision. Comes with several years of experience in teaching IB diploma program and IB middle years program in visual arts. He's an IBDP visual arts examiner, the head of department of arts in Oak Ridge International School, Nord Anglia Education, Bangalore, and has recently been selected as a curriculum developer for visual arts by the IB. He's a social entrepreneur who has started a non-government organization with his passion to help the deprived sections of the society. Nirav has been a part of multiple art shows, workshops, and residencies in art. Nirav is a risk taker who does not fall back in taking challenges and trying to gain knowledge from any possible source. Last but not the least, our third speaker for the day, uh, Ruchira Banka, a passionate educator and administrator in the education field, who comes with over 17 years of experience in teaching, mathematics, leadership, and curriculum development. Her journey of leadership in the education field includes leading the middle school in various curricula, she has been a member of the founding team starting the IB Middle Years program in an IB World School and has led the IB MYP for over four years to be able to structure, review, and implement the IB curriculum effectively. With an aim to spread the IB vision, she intends to coach facilitators across the globe into learning the essence of the program. She leads the consulting team for Art Journal Foundation along with her contributions as a consultant in an upcoming educational organization that specializes in holistic cross-disciplinary programs. She's been awarded by the Indian School Awards for her contribution to the education community in 2021. A lifelong learner, Ruchira ensured that along, alongside her contributions as an educator, she must continue with her interest of writing and art. She has exhibited her paintings in various art galleries and started her own venture of an online art gallery. Welcome, Ruchira. Without further ado, Let's invite our guest speakers for their insights into the webinar for today. 
I would request the audience to keep the mics muted and type in their questions in the chat section so that our speakers can answer the questions towards the end of the session. Over to you, Ruchira. Thank you so much, Rahul, and welcome to all the participants. It's overwhelming for me to see so many participants from across the globe, you know, keen to learn so much about the MYP. And, you know, MYP has been something that has become my passion. And I being, uh, once I've become an IB educator, I have started, you know, eating IB, breathing IB, and IB all around. So today we are just going to talk about the MYP assessment to begin with. So IB conducts a e assessment at the end of grade 10, which is MYP of five, which consists of two components, the on screen assessment, which is lying in the subjects of language and literature, mathematics, sciences, individuals and societies, language acquisition and interdisciplinary learning. Another important component of this e assessment is the e portfolio, which is expected for the subjects of arts, design, physical and health education. These e portfolios are nothing but a compilation of tasks that the students do under the supervision of their teachers in the school. And then these are sent to IB for moderation. And when I talk about moderation, I mean to say that the teachers mark these portfolios in school based on the IB MYP criteria. And then the selected portfolios are sent to IB where they would look at the marking done by the teachers in the school. So today. We are going to talk about these portfolios in detail, especially for the MYP visual arts and discuss the strategies that some of our experienced facilitators have helped their learners to achieve the best of scores in the portfolios. And when we talk about the portfolios, the first step that comes to our mind as teachers is where do I start? What is the ignition? And yes, the IB provides us with the ignition. Uh, next slide, please. We talk about the pickups. I'm sure all of you have heard about what a pickup is a partially completed unit planner, which is released by the IB. And for the May session, which is it is released on the 1st of November, which is coming very soon for the upcoming uh, session in 2022. And for the November session, it is released on the 1st of May. The partially completed unit planner contains the unit title, the key and the related concepts, the global context for the unit. However, the exploration for the global context may be picked up by the teachers and students when they are unpacking the units in the classroom. And it contains a statement of inquiry. There are inquiry questions uh, in the pickup, which includes and gives the facilitators a direction to set an appropriate pace for inquiry in the classroom. Apart from the inquiry questions, the e-portfolio contains the details of all the four tasks of summative assessments that need to be completed by the students as a part of their e-portfolio. So when I talk about the e-portfolio, it is in this in the form of four well-knit tasks which have a seamless flow. They move from you move from one task to the other, and you would not realize when you are working on the process. So each of these tasks is assessed on the IB MYP year five criteria for visual arts. And again, these are mentioned in the planner very clearly along with all the strand requirements for the tasks. Apart from these, a set of resources is provided by the IB in the partially completed unit planner, which give appropriate guidance to the students and teachers on what direction to proceed for and marks a formal end to the unit plan. Of course, the reflection does follow as we follow in each and every unit plan that we do during the year. Whereas IB provides a structure in the form of a pickup, the IB also leaves some space for creativity and thinking because these are certain skills that IB wants our students, our learners to develop. So the teachers have the flexibility to plan their learning engagements in such a way that would best suit the context of their learners and would be able, and the teachers are able to plan their learning engagements throughout the uh, throughout the release of the unit planner till the end till the submissions as per the requirements of the students and as per their learning abilities so ultimately with this leads to a set of standardized assessments and expectations from all schools across the globe so it's like we have a standardized assessment but we have the flexibility to work as per the needs of the students so win-win situation for everybody and along with this, uh, of course, there is a seed sown for creativity for sure. So teachers are free to decide what engagements do they plan? How do they ensure that the learners develop their subject specific skills? The learners develop their uh, approaches to learning skills and how do they grow up as IB learners as holistic learners? 
So we can say that the IB gives us the framework and as teachers, as facilitators, it is imperative for us that we understand the needs and then translate it to the students in a much easier and simplified ways. So I trust all of this can become clearer and uh, more visible to the teachers with experience. So experience, I would say, is the key word that leads you to the best of scores for your students. So. Uh, I think we have our experienced facilitators, Ms. Nirupama and Mr. Nirav, who will talk about their journey and who will talk about how well they have trained their students in the past sessions and they've got the best of scores. So I would love to pass on to mic, the mic to Ms. Nirupama now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ruchika. It's a pleasure being on air with uh, all of you. And I look forward to sharing my. Um, experiences and knowledge with the rest of the teachers who are on the panel. Welcome and um, look forward to sharing more information with all of you. Now, like Ruchika, Ruchira, you mentioned that once you are in the IB system, you breathe and think and live IB, rightly so, because that just becomes such an ingrained part of your life. You really don't think beyond that. It becomes a part of you. Now, um, Let's talk about the ePortfolio over here. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? <clears throat> yeah, thank you. So when we're talking about tasks and we're talking about the unit plan, like Ms. Ruchira said in the beginning, that the IB gives you the pickup where you have the necessary uh, framework for the teachers to work on. Now, there are a lot of teachers who will ask questions like, can I change the key concept or can I change the global? No, you cannot change anything. The only thing that you can possibly um, tweak would be not really tweak is you have the choice to select is the questions. So that is something that you could possibly say, all right, the inquiry questions are, they give you three, four, which is the one that you would want to work with. That is something that you could possibly manipulate to your advantage, but that's about it. You cannot change anything else. Now let's start talking with task one. The first thing that I do with my students is you explain the same, what is the unit all about? Now, once you've started with what is the unit all about? We talk about a group activity here. I divide every task into various activities. So for group one, for task one, I would have uh, uh, activity one, two, two, three, and four. Task two, I would have activity three, uh, five, six, and seven, and so on and so forth. So that is divided into various activities that address the whole marking criteria. For the students, it becomes easier for them to to respond to the uh, question and uh, work according to, to what is required. So first and foremost, we're looking at the mind map, which is a group mind map, map that I do with the students. They, we put them into groups, depending on the number of students you have in the class. So there is a discussion going on what the theme is all about. Uh, a, a group thought process is, is put on paper, and then we have an individual one. So that kind of works in two ways the able students really come up with fantastic answers and the students who are not so able are supported by the able students. So it's a win-win situation in every way. Um, we then start looking at um, connections with conceptual understanding. What is the whole concept about? How do the students address a KC, DCRC and SOI? Uh, addressing the inquiry question. So this is all kind of done verbally in class and activities are set so on so that the students are able to address it. Introduction of artists. Now when we're doing an introduction of artists, the IBO does give you a whole number of um, sites that you can get onto, uh, thought processes that you can uh, research on and actually hash out with the students. So please, I would advise you to use this pick up um, in detail with the students. They can then start looking at their own research and come up with various other artists, um, known and unknown, or known, I would not say unknown, 
always make sure that you have known artists. Do not look at artists who are not so famous and you're not able to find information about them. So that is something that is highly advised. Please do not encourage students to look at unknown artists. Um, when we are looking at um, selecting artists, it's very important for the students to think about how do they, how do their work reflect world issues or provoke thought or raise awareness? How is these artists um, addressing the SOI? Then we look at critical analysis of the artist's work, essential for an in-depth understanding of the elements and principles of art. It's very, very necessary that the students have a very deep understanding of how the elements and principles of art are addressed in the artist's work. Now, this is also, this kind of cascades into when they are doing the other tasks where they are reflecting onto their own work. So the understanding of elements and principles of art has to be very strong from day one. Original and displaced context is another uh, important uh, task which needs to be addressed. And this is where students mostly lose marks. Now, when we're talking about original displaced con um, uh, context, it has to, it is related to in-depth research. What was the intention of the artist when it was created? How was it received by the artist, by the audience? Why was it so? So what was the political, emotional, social structure of that time uh, while the artist was creating the work? This must showcase the political, emotional, like I said, social situation of that time. Now, another very important thing is bibliography, that is citation must have in-text citation, especially of the images, and also where is the student getting the information from. Do not copy-paste anything. If you are getting some information from whatever site you are, you can, um, you must put it in your own words. But citation, again, is very important. Where are you getting this information from? Yeah. Uh, over to Nirav. Is there anything you would like to add in? Hello. Hello to all. Namaste. This is Nero Patel. Yes, uh, Ms. Uh, Nero Pama, thank you so much. I would like to add here a few points. I, I generally do with my students when we are talking about mind map. So make sure students should make mind map in art journal. This will give different impact when students will, you know, prefer when they are going to develop digitally format for the submission. So students will ask you, can I make on digitally format? So prefer students should create mind map on art journal and in depth with the given topic. Second point I would like to add here, when we have factual, debatable and conceptual questions given by IB, so <clears throat> students can give those answer in task one, two or three, anywhere when they get, you know, understanding what the answer meaning and own, uh, students own thought process. It should not be like, you know, copy paste from anywhere. Give with the examples of you know old artists or artworks uh, artworks it will be give more, more weightage to get high points because when examiner will see artworks and submission it will reflect with what we need to reflect to examiner how students has completed the process so how students we can present students with knowledgeable or you know process and the continuous involvement throughout the mip four to five i uh, I would like to add here one more point. When e-portfolio talk, when we are talking about e-portfolio, it's not about November to May journey. It's not about November to April journey. This is something start from MBP year four. Okay, so when students have something to present here, and they can, it may be related with the theme, so students can present in the uh, a document in the presentation that will be beneficial for the get good weightage, good uh, achievement level. Yes, thank you so much. Next slide. <clears throat> right, so when we're looking at proposal and development of task two, now this is to do with um, thought process. So what is your intent? First and foremost, before we do anything, what is the intent of creating the work? What is the purpose? Why is it so important to you? How are you answering the SOI or GC? So once your intent is decided, what I do with my students is I actually get them to do creative writing. So it's almost like a story writing that they do, 
where they have and that, that they showcase an understanding of the SOI uh, and the GC and how are they using uh, those words to create symbols and also look at um, creating a picture. So when you're creating a picture, it starts with a thought process, right? So that thought process is then turned into the words or turned into symbols, or it can go either ways. I just find it easier for students to first write down their thought process and then go into the drawing section of it and create minimum um, three design ideas. When they are creating their design ideas, it is highly recommended that they have their own primary resources or their own photographs. Those photographs help them with drawings, um, textures that they can see, colors that they can see, or even if they've got figures coming in, what is the position of the figures, what kind of a mood is being created. So it's very important for them to have their own primary source images. Uh, that would come under their initial designs. So when they're doing their initial designs also, I advise them that they must have it all in color. So they can use color pencils, they can use whatever medium of choice there, but it must represent their drawing ability. Okay, so when we're looking at um, their initial idea, now I get the students to again do this in activities where they have, they are showcasing their intent, the content, so what is the subject matter of your work, what symbolism will help you, what is the function of your work. So when we talk about the ultimate function is, uh, are you creating the work to express an emotional desire of yourself? Is it to bring in uh, awareness to the society? Is it commenting on the social structure or the cultural structure? So what is the main aim for doing the work that you're doing? What is the accessibility? That means where are you going to be showcasing your work? What is, what is your plan? What kind of an audience are you looking at? Are you going to be addressing school students or are you looking at a worldwide audience? Are you looking at adults or children, old age, wh whatever? So that is another thing that the students need to think about in their proposal. So the main points that you need to think about is the intent, content, function, and accessibility. So once the students have these points all sorted out, it becomes easier for them to address all the other tasks. The proposal must have all of these points in them along with their design ideas. <clears throat> Anything else you would like to add, Mr. Nero? Yes, I would like to add here one point. When we are talking about uh, choice of medium, I do generally with my students, it's about technique and exploration. So when we are talking about one, two or three design, so it's about applications and techniques. So instead of going one artwork with the one medium, I suggest my students go for the combination of mediums. So it will represent more techniques. Uh, for example, color pencil and watercolor or charcoal or watercolor and uh, graphite uh, like that. So we will, uh, this will, three artwork students will uh, at least cover, you know, six different mediums, six di uh, different techniques and uh, uh, applications. So students have, you know, enough content to write about uh, the techniques and the applications. And when students are developing this task, so definitely they are inspired from somewhere. So should mention in here, like, you know, where is the inspiration, what is the inspiration? That will give good weightage to students, how they inspire and from where. And inspiration can be anything like any artwork or in, if there is about regarding thought process, then it can be uh, uh, experience, moments, memories, and TV series or uh, movies, anything. Sorry, there is one thing that I would like to add in over here. Um, when we're doing selection of medium and experiments, a, the IBO does not advocate that the students start with a new medium in year 11. This is something that needs to be developed from <clears throat> previous years. If you are, for example, if you're looking at watercolors, <clears throat> you need to be able to show that strength or the development in say watercolors for instance this is just one medium like mr nero said 
it is advised to have mixed media and rightly so. You need to show an exploration of media, say, for instance, you could have watercolors with printmaking, or you could have printmaking with acrylics, or you could have um, sculpture, you know, various different 2D, 3D different sorts of works that you are exploring. Now, again, like I said, the exploration does not start from year 11. It needs to have started from previous years so that basic understanding the student already has and in year 11 he or she is only enhancing that understanding and showcasing a development of a previous understanding it is to the student's advantage to do that sorry you can continue please thank you mr Nirav. yes uh, i think i should share this thing here when i start uh, when I going to complete task one, so I suggest my student. It's not mentioned in the IB, you know, the requirement or assessment. But I generally do this practice with my students. So where they can use, where they can link task one and task two. For example, when I, I suggest my students to go for at least three drawing in task one, last before reflection, before reflection slide. So when we are doing research and development, critical analysis and original and displaced context about when they have something in the back of the mind, so I can go for this medium, you know, experiment in the next task, or I can develop this particular outcome in the task three. Thought process, you know, goes on. So when we can suggest students to please draw those drawings, and you can develop in task one, last before reflection slide. So these three drawings we can use in task two for the experiment. Task one only drawing, task two students will go for the different medium. So it will develop and it will connect with the task one, task two. Easily like link with the task one, task two. I hope it's give you know good weightage also, like when students will develop this uh, strategy. Yes, uh, anything else, Ms. Nirupama? No, I think that's right. See, all the tasks are linked. It is a very smooth yes. cascade of thought hmm. process, the way it is linked. So when you are working with task one all of your thought processes then trickle down to task two so task one is basically looking at research getting your um, like i say ammunition ready right so task one usually is gathering the ammunition task two and three is then working towards usage of that ammunition to create the final bank right <laughs> it's a very uh, um, I would say 21st century uh, thought process where everything is into ammunition. <laughs> Sounds very violent, but it, it isn't really so. <laughs> yes. Next right, shall time. we move to task three? <clears throat> yes, uh, next slide is task three. Uh, this is outcome. What students develop in task one about uh, artists? Uh, theme understanding, exploration, creating mind map, and artist research, and critical analysis of artwork, display and original context after the reflection, development of drawing, and task two, experiment with a different medium with the process, at least minimum three stages of the process. And this is the time where students will make final piece, we can call masterpiece. So development of the final products, development of final design idea. So we as a teacher suggest students to develop through the process and task three is basically it is not about only skill is about concept also when students are going to develop any artwork here like minimum three students should go for at least minimum three and finalize one so it will reflect it will present the student understanding and conceptual and as a creative thinking critical thinking uh, skills also choice of medium is very important what particular thought process or concept students is want to convey and how that particular medium is going to help the student. Why, how, when, where these questions as a facilitator, we should ask all the time with the, you know, discuss with the student, brainstorm with the students, other then they will get, you know, students will get clarity for the documentation for the written, you know, area task when they have, you know, clear with the thought process, then they have right content. There's no note to copy from anywhere, right? Uh, next point is presentation of the artwork with conceptual understanding. What have you presented your book, your work in, uh, in, the, in this way? How does add meaning to your work? So I said how it's going to add meaning, which medium students want to add, uh, going to use, why, which particular technique, explanation, 
of the inspiration is very important because we all are inspired from something someone we should write not necessary again i am repeating same thing what i explained in task 2 not necessary Ex inspiration can be only artworks inspiration can be anything your experience memories and uh, movies series anything anything display of the final artwork this is very important point what particular audience students wants to target no need to display that artwork final artwork in that particular area students can create digit digitally also but students need to write in the detail why this particular artwork required this particular area or space sometime uh, when we look at in the past when we see well, for example uh, gurnik artwork so it's, it was after world war ii and do you think that particular artwork is created this time and it will impact this it will give the same impact no because that was a different purpose different time so students should aware what artwork they are going to display and where which for ta target audience they are looking for and they should write and uh, uh, they feel good good you know achieve points and good achievement uh, weightage of if students will you know create the virtual background digitally no need to go there you know particular place and uh, take photography or display there yes uh, miss nirupana would you like to add anything yeah okay so let's talk about the development of the final product first and foremost now in task two the students had created three design ideas right so mm. for when you're showing the development come through we are looking at from those three designs you choose one that works for you now how are you going to show development that for that one design so you move on from that one and you start looking at how am i going to make changes within this one to make it better so what I do over here is I actually get the students to do a peer assessment or peer reflection. So that really works and the student is able to hash out any issues within their design ideas. That means if they've used that one idea and we talk about development, you say, all right, for instance, there is um, there is a figure there, for instance, if you're looking at emotion in art, for instance, uh, and the student decides to use a portrait with a heart and wants to use hands. So what can we do with these three symbols to make the design look even more interesting? Will the heart work as a brain? Will the heart be next to where it is supposed to be? Will the heart take over the body? So these are different compositions that the student starts exploring. So from that one out of those three design ideas, you choose one, and then that one explore, is explored further by three more design ideas using the same symbols, but different compositional ideas. That is then discussed as a peer, uh, as, a, as a class. So we have, I have uh, class reflections and students give their own ideas what works what doesn't work and that gives the opportunity for the student to develop the artwork better and also all of this goes into their reflection so they have peer reflections coming through and this is the time i do it with them when we talk about choice of mediums now in the previous uh, task too they did a while they were developing they're looking at different mediums now when we're looking at choice of mediums we it is very essential to keep in mind that the artists that they have looked at now those artists can inspire them for the concept those artists can also inspire them with the choice of medium or i get my students to look at at least three artists uh, it also depends on what the requirement of the um, uh, the pickup is i think in last year's um, pickup they said one or two artists they did not mention, they specified one or two artists, but I still got my students to do three. So I do make them work beyond what is expected, but that got my students, the, the school average was 6.67. So I guess I did work them to the bones, but it was to their advantage. So these kind of things really, really help. What skills are you applying? What technique are you using? This needs to be linked to the artist that has inspired them. Now, it is not necessary that the students are using the artists that they have already done their research on for mediums. Maybe they, while the process of 
uh, research. They've come up with uh, an artist that has uh, worked better for them. This is the time for them to add in and say, all right, um, I did address a different artist for task two, but this one seems to sit better, whereas my uh, mediums are concerned or use of technique is concerned. That needs to be addressed here. And also with the images. Now, when you've got these images, you have to remember you are doing in-text citation, MLA 8 format, please. Make sure you are doing that. Uh, IB is insane about citations. So please, please do not forget that. When we talk about presentation of the artwork with conceptual understanding, that is what have you presented your work? Why have you presented in that way? How does this add meaning to your work? When we're talking about all of that um, and um, displaying your work. So for instance, we will say, all right, the student decides that I want to display my work in a, a shopping mall. Right now, the student needs to be able to identify and to write down why does the student want to um, uh, display the work in a shopping mall? What audience is the student targeting? What is the aim for doing all of that? So how does that, how does the, the, the background of the shopping mall add meaning to the work? How does that um, reflect the understanding of the SOI or GC, that connection has to be there. It is extremely, extremely important. So every move that the student makes has to be justified and linked to the KCGC or SOI. Is there anything else you would like to add, Mr. Nero? No, it was a great uh, you know, exp explanation. We can move next slide. Right, so when we're looking at the commentary, which is the last one, this is all to do with reflections. We do look at, well, the students have already been reflecting constantly in all the tasks, uh, answering why, how, why, all of those questions are answered as they go. But on this slide, everything becomes very comprehensive. Right, so what is the overall learning? What is the outcome connection with the statement of inquiry? How does the artwork highlight world issues or provoke thoughts or raise awareness? Which best describes their work and why? How successful were the students in showcasing that in their work? So all of these pointers are addressed in task four. So when we're looking at overall learning, the students will talk about what did you learn during the project that helped you develop your work? So that could be the new artists, uh, understanding of compositions, techniques, what was the topic, etc. cetera. Um, then they also need to look at how did the students take uh, that new knowledge and reflect it in their work. So how, how did that understanding of what the artists did, why the artists did, how the artists did help the student in his or her own work? We're we looking at outcome connection of the statement of inquiry, for example, this is the unit that was uh, given to us, uh, I think it was last year or last last year, I can't remember. Art has a power to impact the world. Now, does your work do this? How successful were you in creating work with meaning? How did you show what you learned about your topic? So it's all about how, why, when, all of this is addressed. So we're looking at outline, present and formulate. Um, then we start looking at highlighting of the world issue. We, we spoke about reflections on skills, learner profile, critical analysis of their own work. Now, when we're doing critical analysis of their own work, I get them to work on a completely different slide where they are addressing all the elements and principles of art and how the students have used that understanding to create their own work and also how have they addressed the SOIGC and KC in their work. Is there anything you would like to add in, Nira? I want to add here one thing, <clears throat> peer review. It's optional, but this will give, you know, good uh, understanding uh, students when teacher, here teacher role, like teacher will select uh, peer, uh, peer uh, pair 
and they will discuss about task three process and student will give you know each other review and students will write this is completely optional so students can document in the final submission or students can be you know keep uh, for the learning uh, for purpose uh, at school purpose only no need to submit uh, include in the final submission yes uh, i well the students really do that in any case when they're looking at a development of design ideas so the peer reflection does come in uh, the peer reflection is usually done only for the outcome because the students don't have access to the uh, e portfolio as such of the other students right yes so peer reflection is only on the final outcome uh, i think we can move over to the next next slide task. next slide yes. yes this is very important there is no set format prescribed by the ibo so what we are um, what advices we are giving you it is out of experience and that experience has worked for our students and us yes you can be as creative as you want as long as you are addressing all the marking criteria. that is of prime importance so address the marking criteria and be creative Absolutely. But like you said yes. no prescribed format yes uh, i want to repeat one uh, two points here uh point out two points here one when it's talk about e-portfolio four tasks. So basically what students want to present from the beginning to end, once you look at the process of e-portfolio, uh, you know, presentation, development, outcome, reflection. So the process of developing of masterpiece. Hmm. How students can, you know, if you ask any practitioner artist, this is the same process all artists are doing at, you know, in the hmm. own studio. What we are teaching students in the classroom, same thing, but in the different four tasks. So how we can display, how we can present as a teacher to IBO student. My student is, you know, knowledgeable. He has uh, involvement throughout the two years and how he's, uh, you know, completed all the document and with the evidences without any misplays, you know, that uh, uh, integrity, uh, academic integrity. So this, if you follow this strategy, definitely students will get a good achievement. This practice, you know, my students got many students got good, you know, seven points, six points through this process, and same for Miss Nirupama also. Yeah, last year we got a six point six seven average. I am so chuffed about it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I'm so, sure. Uh, I mean, your students are blessed ones to have both of you as facilitators who've been, you know, guiding them right. And I completely agree that this comes through experience, you know. And uh, now that our audience have a clarity about the four tasks and how seamlessly you put in together on how do we move from one task to another, how are the tasks related to each other. Uh, at this point, I think uh, Neerav and I would like to share a personal experience with all our audience and you all that um, I was the MYP coordinator in a IB World School. And when I started with my journey, I had to guide my arts department on how to create the e-portfolio, what all are the requirements. I just had the MYP arts guide with me. And uh, of course, all the details, all the requirements are mentioned in the arts guide, but for me, being a non arts person, it became a little difficult. I could not sail through that immediately because the details of the tasks for me was missing and there were no exemplars to give me directions and guide my teachers. I did not find that kind of support that I was seeking at that point of time. I was a little, you know, uh, all over the place on how do I ensure that my students get the best kind of experiences while making the portfolios, understanding them and getting to the best achievement levels. Nirav, uh, if you would want to add here. Yes, I think I sell in the same boat when I stepped into MYP, I could get guidance from my coordinator, but many things detail were vague. Uh, that is where Ruchira and I, after experiencing portfolio and collaborating with an experienced educator, come up with an idea of authoring the book. Offering a book, we we have where we have tried to bring in the requirements of e-portfolio under one cover. This book 
the visual arts companion for ib middle year program shall be published by soon by notion press detail shall follow on your social media links <coughs> uh, next slide please uh, we trust that this book shall be able to bring you clarity about the basics of art the importance of art journal and the requirements of e portfolio in a language which is in a simplified form i uh, you know hats off to all these visual art teachers who are right here with us and across the globe struggling and sailing at every step with their students trying to give them the best however uh, you know sometimes we need that kind of support okay there's somebody to back us up and i believe that this book the cover page of which we would want to show you on the next slide please uh, would give you some clarity in a simplified language this is going to come soon and at this point i would like to express my special gratitude to miss nirupama who has helped us to review the book you know we had our own ideas we had our own understanding as uh, you know she correctly said that there's no prescribed format so we definitely wanted uh, inputs and uh, you know wanted to collaborate as ib says collaboration is the key so we we collaborated we came up with ideas we had several discussions and her inputs and ideas helped us to structure the content and the context and we truly appreciate that thank you ms nirupama for all that support and uh, we really yeah. hope that this book this is i must say the one of its kind the first of its kind in the market which would be for the mip visual arts i hope this is this is useful for you in your respective journeys that you are trying to cover with your students with the upcoming e portfolios and we look forward for the book being published by the notion press and on the stalls by the end of november this year and uh, hope this helps you we please keep following our social media links for further updates about the book and i would wish you all good luck for the upcoming portfolios thank you so much for being such wonderful audience and so many questions pouring in so uh, may i hand over the stage to mr rahul again thank you rochara and congratulations uh, rochara need up for that uh, amazing thank resource you. that you have uh, right now shown to us uh, because uh, i think when you mention this whole idea of um, uh you know uh, going through the guide <clears throat> trying to understand reading between the lines the whole idea of understanding there are suggestions there are things that are advisable there are things that are possibly to be avoided so i think this kind of a resource would be really good for uh, you know the facilitators out there the people who might uh, need an extra extra set of hands for uh, for their uh, uh, you know support in the implementation of the process thank you nirupama thank you nirav for this amazing insight Let's... i do have uh, a couple of questions for you so with this i would like to say that we are opening the session of uh, questions and answers <clears throat> and with this uh, let's say the first question which i have already answered in the chat but i would also like your insights nirupama and nirav uh, vini asks uh, hi ms nirupama made a point about citation earlier are there any preferred citation styles example apa mla harvard for ib students mla 8 format is what is uh, suggested by the ibo so i highly recommend that you use mla 8 format Okay, so the next question for the speaker says, "How is this different from uh, diploma program or DP by Subha Day?" Um, it's a stepping stone for DP. Yes, that. it's a stepping stone. So if you've done very well, uh, DP is going to be a walk in the park. Well, I wouldn't really say that, <laughs> but yes, essentially you have. Uh, a strong base work is there anything you would like to add yes uh, i will i yes i i think so i can say here the you know mbip is just a trailer and we have big movie in dp <laughs> in simplified word <laughs> lubna athari asks are there media trials in task 3 yes when you're doing media development that's where you're 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 exploring different mediums so yes there is 
definitely. Okay. And Pushpavati asks, uh, artists chosen by students, is it necessary to follow artists' techniques only or they can create their own? Not necessary. Uh, can I take this? Yes, please. Uh, not necessary. Uh, students can develop own technique, but students should mention the detail uh, analysis, what they are going to, you know, critical analysis, what they are, which artwork they are going to, you know, uh, going to develop critical analysis. When, where students can give in task to somewhere process, if students want, otherwise students can take anything or uh, others also, it's fine. See, uh, you, I, I, I'd you like want to, to say add anything? Something. Yeah, I, I'd like to say something yes. over here. So now when we're looking at um, artists, right? And we, we, we suggest that the students look up at least three different artists. Now, when they're looking at these three different artists, they could be in, they could be a source of inspiration conceptually or for the mediums or for both. Right now, when they're doing that, uh, for instance, let's take Vincent van Gogh for one and let's take Andy Warhol as another artist or uh, Guggen for another one. So three different artists who have three different <clears throat> styles of painting, drawing, or uh, sculpture, or whatever they are doing there. So when they are doing media experiments, they could say, all right, I really liked the way Vincent van Gogh used impasto in his work. Maybe I want to use that. Or then you can say, all right, I liked screen printing as Andy Warhol did. Can I use <laughs> screen print with impasto somewhere? So that's, that's where the student actually takes things bits and pieces from different artists and puts it together and creates a completely new technique right that might work or that might not work that's completely uh, different but the fact that the student has come up with something which is new in a way is what is appreciated because that's where experiment comes in exploration comes in and then development comes in so yes, you, it is essential for the students to be looking at different artists and, and, and to be experimenting with different techniques and coming up with their own. Um, uh, for the speakers, we have the next question. It might be a bit long. It's by Shilpi Singh. It says, I want to know the views of the facilitators on last year's task one of unit, emotions and art where students had to provide research on the artists along with the context at the point of creation. Would you like to take it or should I answer? You, 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 please go ahead. Okay. Uh, to be very honest, I think that was fantastic. My students did very, very well. Uh, they kind of connected their own emotions with the work that they were doing. So artist inspiration was essential. And finally, the work that they created linked to themselves. Now, IBO really appreciates if things, uh, if their work is personal. If they're looking at their own personal feelings, if they're looking at their own personal culture, they're looking at everything which is connected to them, whether it is in their own country or if they're expats, where are they living, how are they interacting with the world is what they want to see. So um, I think my students really did very well there. Uh, yes, uh, and, yeah. uh, for me, we both have, you know, a bit different, you know, strategy, me and Ms. Dirukuma. In task one, what I do generally with my student, when I be released topic, uh, emotion in art, for example. So what my student or I feel, this is a big umbrella. If we'll talk about emotion in art, there will be many emotions. So one student asked me, sir, can I focus on only anxiety? Can I focus only fear or happiness or love? I said, definitely you can. And likewise, like uh, students develop a portfolio, different emotions and you know, connect with own you know, experience and own self discovery. Definitely how uh, Ms. Nirvoma mentioned. And my students also got very good, you know, many students got seven. It was 24 students batch, big batch. And many students got six and sevens only. Yeah, so was mine. I, <laughs> I think we we did very well. Ah, well, our students did very well, and yes. rightly so. Like I like I said also that personal is what really works. And when you talk about like you just mentioned, uh, the student wanted to work with fear. Hmm. Now, when a student is talking about fear, we talk about what creates fear. Hmm. It's an emotion, yes. 
but what creates fear fear could be anything fear could be a phobia fear could anything. be anything yeah anything fear of darkness fear of spider fear of insects fear of reptile fear of people i mean it, it's a huge huge umbrella yes so when we talk about fear as an emotion then you start with a brainstorm yes. and then you kind of start segregating into steps that you would want to work with you can't have such a huge open-ended uh topic as in fear right right or any other any other topic for that matter but yes essentially that is what needs to be done i hope we've answered the question if there is any more um what is the right word explanation please um, let us know uh there are more questions um, uh, speakers uh, there's one question by Sabrina. It says, is there a recommended model by which the students may present their commentary? A recommended model? It means... No, like we said. No, like we said, that there is no prescribed model. Uh, there is no prescribed is model. And, and this yeah. practice will not give students good high, uh, achievement level. Because students are doing, you know, same thing with, you know, that is not going to create, you know, you know expanding. So better... Uh, inform students what strategy what students need to develop how need to develop and give them freedom to develop own presentation okay As so a... my my take over here i sort of spoon feed my students a little bit in the sense that i do create a powerpoint presentation of slides which address the criteria. so i kind of save the time for the students to you know um, start thinking about where am I putting what information? So for instance, if I have a task one, I will have activities put out in a PowerPoint presentation where the students need to find information and put it in. So I do a little bit more work, which is not required by the teachers, but it helps the students because the students are not wasting time trying to figure out where and what information goes. So I get them to spend that time in finding that information and putting it into a slide format that I do for them. But that is again, a prerogative of the teacher. It is not prescribed by the IBO and it is not essential. I would say that's, that's actually an excellent strategy in Arapama because uh, you know, if you're giving them that uh, solid platform, solid launch already, where they don't really have to get uh, deeper into the whole exploration of the the different criterion or the rubrics as we can call them it it might become very easy for them as a as a launch pad and uh, when you say that uh, you s might uh, spoon feed them i won't consider it that way because uh, you know in um, whatever subjects we teach in uh, ib or we facilitate in ib it's it's more about the whole idea of giving them that solid uh, base for uh, the launch and uh, then not letting them get <laughs> lost in the whole process of exploration that's what uh, we are there yeah. as facilitators for uh, having said that uh, a small question from pushpavati says these criteria can we start from myp 1 2 and 3 yes Yes, okay. Of the next question from Sahili. One, uh, one minute. Uh, uh, Sorry. I yes. Uh, I want to give here one uh, you know clarification. If you check MYP guide, arts guide, there is a year one criteria that is for grade six. Year mm -hmm. two is for grade seven and eight, and year five is for nine and ten. So when we are dealing with 10 standard, select year five criteria, not year one or year three. Uh, yes, thank you. For my understanding of the question was, uh, do we address the starters of the criteria from year yes. seven upwards? But yes, that's exactly what you do. Yes, they are not in so much detail as they are for year 11, that is MYP five. Uh, but the bases do start from year seven upwards. Okay. The next question, uh, speakers, would be by Saheli. Uh, saying she has two questions, so I'll combine both of them. She says, "Can the exploration of ideas be shown via multiple steps in task two, 
and also how many sketches you suggest a student to add to task two yes uh, i be required you know uh, uh, expect three different steps beginning middle and end but i suggest my students always minimum five at least five steps should you know present so examiner will get clarity like how students are take and where is the you know the how the artworks is going to complete only sketch we are talking about if sketch is more than it's about medium when you are selecting when students are going to select medium then it will take more pictures you know more evidences so better teacher you know should select which uh, picture or which evidence will you know uh, more meaningful to uh, keep in the presentation so teacher here you know help the students towards in the selection of the evidences of the process thank you nirav so also um, there are a couple of questions interesting questions um while uh, i will first like to announce that we are extending the q and a session for the next 10 minutes for the people who have asked their question and uh, it has not yet been answered you can stay in the webinar while we do announce that officially the webinar is over and if you have uh, because it's time it's 7:30 india time right now so if there's anything you need to catch up to you can leave the webinar if you feel like however there are a couple of questions that are that our speakers are yet to answer so if you want to stay you're welcome to stay uh with this uh, speakers uh, a very small question by mansi it says are there peacocks for ibdp no no there are no pickups for ID, IBDP. The students uh, for IBDP develop their own thought process, their own questions, um, and they create their own body of work uh, depending on and which way they want to go. Yes, uh, when we are talking about in MIP task two, it's about experiment. There is a full component 25 slides called process portfolio. And where you are talking about here task the outcome, there is a big component called internal assessment, art making practices, 11 artwork for HL, 7, 8 artworks for SL. And when you are talking about research and planning task one, there is a comparative study component, 18, 15 to 18 type for HL. So this strategy, but you know, in a bit elaborate and in the depth, two years journey. So that will take one more session. <laughs> like, like, it's, it's like like we said that uh, this is just just the trailer MYP is just the yeah trailer. just a trailer MDP. yeah it's almost like a first year university to be very honest yes absolutely right so the next question we have speakers is by the Panvita. it says if any student uh, wishes to use video instead of images of artworks and text for the e-portfolio, how will it go? Can any sample be made available for the same? I want to share my experience here. In uh, when it was a uh, artist maker difference unit was the last two last year, and my one of the student you know were created animation in the task two one of the medium. The animation was five seconds, six seconds, and the other, you know, uh, uh, everything later documented in the PPT. So when I ask uh, I to IB, what should I do here? I got answer. Task two only I have converted in the video. Task one, three, and four I have submitted as a PPT. So you can check in arts guide page number fifty six. There is a table. If you are going to, if if student is going to submit zero minutes video, mean thirty slide, student can submit. Three minutes video means 24 slides. Six minute video means 18 slides. Nine minutes video, 12 slides. 12 minutes video, six slides. And 15 minutes video, zero slides. So these are this is the ratio what you know prescribed by IBO. We will get you find in the IB Arts Guide Media Lab program, page number 56. Would you like to add anything? No, thank you, Anira. That was splendid. A very to the point, along with the, yes. the page number. <laughs> <laughs> Nilakshi asks, is it necessary in task three to use all skills or ideas which were mentioned in task two? Not really. You are showing your development, right? When you're showing your development, you might decide to pick one and then take it further. So it's not necessary. But I suggest here for task three, what art material medium students going to select in task two they should carry forward in task three otherwise experiment and outcome not make sense to what you have developed 
that yes that yes. of course that goes without yes. saying that you have to have huh. that link i mean you've been exploring say acrylics and watercolors or, or oil pastels and then you forget all of that and move on to printmaking or sculpture that doesn't work because you've lost yes. out why the hell did you do all of this stuff pardon my language here <laughs> <laughs> That is Grace asking, are students allowed to insert reflections from peer assessments and group activities into their reflection? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, Genofre asks, uh, Genofre, I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Can students in the fifth year portfolio use experiences from previous years as a comparison? Yes. As long as it works, with the thought process it shouldn't be random shilpi asks i want some tips on using resources to draw out subject specific content to explore the peak up sorry can you repeat the question yeah it's more like she's asking for a suggestion where she says i want some tips on using resources to draw out subject specific content to explore the peak up uh See, now when we're looking at resources, the, the pickup already gives you resources, a lot of it. And I, for one, use the Art21 org quite a bit. That's because it is linked to contemporary artwork. So I do use that. Art21.org, um, you mentioned, right? Art, Art21.org, yes. I'm typing it in the chat for the reference. And yes, I correct. also look at uh, the art story, which again looks at um, history of art. So these are just on top of my head at the moment, but there is a whole list of websites that I share with my students for research purposes. Okay, thank you. Neelam asks, what should be included in the commentary task? To see more interesting and stronger. Commentary tasks include. Can I take this? Yes, please. Commentary tasks include uh, the <clears throat> overall reflection. First of all, what students you know learn throughout this task one, two, three. Overall reflection. The second point: conceptual understanding. What they have already connected in the task one. Now the task is you know. A portfolio is going to submit the last task. So, what went well? What struggle they have faced? How they came, you know, overcome the struggle? They should mention. And the which ATL skill students develop? How? Which learner profile students develop? How? How the you know, uh, Miss Nirubama mentioned, you know, in specific, why how the you know provoke raise awareness and the impact on the world issue like. So these all the question in uh, we can as a teacher we can give them and students can you know remain right, right on the you know depth understanding. This will give a task for in depth clarification and understanding. Would you like to add anything? Critical analysis of own artwork. Yes, here. Yeah. Task four, very important. And when you're doing critical analysis. Connection with the outcome also here. There are, you know, when students do this, definitely four or five slides over almost. Yes. And there's another question by Nishit. It says it's a long question. To what extent do we guide students to explore media and materials in task two? As I understand from what was said, the three ideas or thumbnails are all explored through a combination of media which means that task three is reserved for the development of the final idea is this right also what is a good timeline to set for each of the tasks you have 11 weeks right um i have a i i share the deadlines with the students for task one two and three so it's Same like here. you give one yeah you give one week for task one then for task two, you give them two to three weeks. Uh, when they start developing, usually it is three weeks because development takes time and presentation of the final work. And then the last one, which is uh, commentary uh, reflections, I give them a week. So it's kind of segregated into the 11 weeks that is prescribed by the IBO. 
There's one interesting question coming in by Mr. Santos, uh, where he asks, uh, I didn't understand if the reference artists should be priorly known by the, uh, just a moment, should be priorly known by the students or unknown to them? So, when you check page number 54 in task one assessment task in the IBO arts uh, guide, it's clearly mentioned in the task one explanation presentation criteria A and D and individual presentation of investigations into a work of masters, artists, theorists, practitioners, critical appreciation of completed work by an artist. Generally, this situation, this current situation, so many students came up with, you know, Instagram artists. Sir, can I take this? Sir, can I take this? So as a teacher, we should not encourage this. We should get enough muddy, enough, enough study material for, you know, we should, you know, inform students. Wow, these artists going to connect with your theme or with your thought process, what you are going to take, what you are going to select and how, what content you will get for these artists. What is, what you will find about this artist culture where you can only in the Instagram page will not give enough content. So this is something that I had mentioned in the beginning that please hmm. do not do not allow students to look at uh, artists who are unknown or who are unknown. very, very um, upcoming artists because there's not enough information about them. There is not enough to write about those artists. So please, it is advised not to use them. They might be brilliant artists. They might come up with brilliant work, but there is not enough information for the students to write about them. If it is a... Um, contemporary artists and the student can connect with the artist, then by all means do it because then the student can, um, you know, send in an email, uh, have a question and answer. So all of those questions are then documented because if the student, if, if the student needs to write about why, how, when, uh, and if the artist is unknown, then how is the student going to document that, right? So it is advisable to use artists who have enough material to write about. There is enough um, proof of their work and thought processes. Uh, and if the student, and if the artist is contemporary, then the art, the student should be able to email or chat with the artist. It depends on where the artist is, right? So there are some students who are, have the, uh, the exposure to go and meet the artist in the gallery and, and have a question answer. Uh, um, session with them. So that, yes, is possible, but not otherwise. Uh, before uh, we move ahead, there are, uh, yes, need of you were saying something. Yes, 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 yes. One tip for teachers, IB support always, you know, think local, act global. Hmm. I suggest my student, I am from India, my students are from India, or, you know, the own culture. I suggest the, your selected theme or given theme, find out Indian artists first, and then connect globally. IB will support this process. If you are from con another country, for example, I suggest my students, if you take Van Gogh or Picasso, instead of go for KG Subramaniam or Raja Ravi Verma or Mehap Hussain and find which artwork they have developed based on your thought, where it's going to find connection. This will give good weightage all the students, you know, presentation. Yes, always. Again, like I said, personal, everything personal. Where are you from? How are you, how are you taking your own culture into being. How are you addressing that? Yes, the So any partner is appreciated by the idea. So speakers, there are a couple of questions more if you would want to take them because uh, uh, we can go ahead. There are two questions more. And in between, I would also like to ask our general foundation to put in the feedback form in the chat so that everyone present can uh, quickly, it will take you a minute to submit the feedback form. It's a quick link where you can just rate us, uh, answer a question or two about uh, the future webinars that you would like us to conduct. And uh, we would love to conduct more sessions for you. While you're doing that, um, I would take in a question. Now, I think I will need um, a, a bit of interpretation here. It's by Elisa. Uh, Elisa, if you're here, you can just type in if I'm interpreting it right. I do see uh, the usage of a Spanish word there. It says what the nivel importance arts in the schools India. What I understand or what I can interpret from it is 
uh, what is the level of importance of arts in the schools in India? I think this is where Nirav can possibly reply because I have not really taught in any Indian school in my 20 years of teaching. So I, I, I like pass this, yeah. pass this you know, uh, uh, question to Ms. Ruchira. She was sure, sure. <laughs> sure, sure. I think uh, with IB coming up uh, in place, art is given the same weightage as any other subject is given. So there is no differentiation to the level of achievement that a student can get in art or or any other subject. So it's definitely an upcoming subject. The thought process initially always has been that, okay, art used to be something where it's more about just drawing and painting. And now the thought process that has been developing and even the parents have started understanding this, that it is more about the process, the kind of skills, the subject specific skills and otherwise that the kids are learning through this uh, wonderful subject where they are able to create new things. Uh, creativity and innovation is something that people are able to focus on. And that is the need of the hour. You know, we need to have our students develop these skills and be able to present themselves in a century where, you know, the jobs are going down, the AI is coming in, and uh, it's just the art, you know, be it any form of art. I'm not talking of just the visual arts, but yes, be it any form of art that helps them develop skills. It's upcoming it's, it's, in India. It's, uh, yeah, it's yes, not just it's, that. It's, it's, sorry, it's not just that. I think uh, arts open up the mind of a student in every possible way because you are looking at not just the emotional aspect of of the society you're also looking at the political historic um, scientific you're just looking at a global aspect which parents really do not or did not understand for them it was drawing and painting but that's not really the whole point we are linked with every subject and I think the arts help the student to understand every other subject so much better. I mean, even if you're looking at English for that instance, I have so many students coming and even the head of the uh, English department would come and say, you know, we've got this aspect of critical thinking. Can you help my students? So when you're looking at critical thinking, there is no other subject better than visual art. Yes. You know, I, I would actually want to add here that when I, as a coordinator, was, you know, uh, helping our teachers to come up with ideas, you know, to have interdisciplinary learning in the school, that is one time that everybody would come in, all disciplines would come in and integrate with that. And, you know, very clearly visible on how the skills are developed through the subject. So, yes, it's an upcoming subject. I would not say everybody still understands the importance, but... Uh, you know, uh, having con conversations like this with like-minded educators, I think, would help us more and more to develop this idea of spreading art. Yeah, we need to push this in our country. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so last question for the day. I think, uh, Rochira and Nirav, this is for you to answer. Is there e-portfolio student work that you can share? I would like to see how you address the tasks by Lubna Athari. Okay, so I think the visual art companion, which we call as your companion, your mentor and your guide is coming up soon on stalls and you should be able to see students work from the past sessions. Uh, that I'm sure would be able to help you understand that how each of the criteria is linked uh, to the task and how the students have addressed that very clearly. We have tried to pick up samples for students work who've got the highest achievement levels and uh, looking forward to for that. Okay, I think Elisa has um, uh, typed in her question in English, pero Elisa, si quieres puedes hacerlo todo en español, yo puedo interpretarlo para ti. Uh, while she has uh, typed it in English, do all schools in India receive knowledge of different forms of art? So I would say uh, it's one of an optional subjects. Uh, it's not that everybody gets to choose art. So when we look at the IB schools and the international schools, uh, arts is definitely being taught as a subject in the primary years, as well as it continues till the middle school. After uh, the students reach in grade eight, 
I think they are given a choice to choose between arts and other subjects. So that is the base that we ensure that we build up for all the students in India. And then, of course, that leads to their interest and their choice as well. Thank you, Rochara. So with this, I can say that now we can come to the conclusion of this webinar, the extended Q&A session. Uh, congratulations, Rochira and Nirav. There is a comment by Lubna that says, I look forward to purchase the book. Uh, Thank you. Just adding up to uh, you know the excitement that you might have right now after the successful completion. I would call it successful because we have been able to actually um, address every question in the chat box. And uh, with this, I think we can conclude this seminar. Please don't forget to fill up the feedback form. Thank you, Rochira. Thank you, Nirav. Thank you, Nirupama. Signing off from our journal foundation, from our side, please feel free to get in touch. If you have anything else to ask, you have our email IDs. Uh, if you have filled up the feedback form, uh, you will obviously get updates from us on a timely basis. Thank you so much, Thank everybody. You. Thank you, Art um, Foundation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nirav. Thank you, Rochira. Good night, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye.